used to back in the days. You hear about an abandoned car, your, your whole mood would change. You'd be down. You, you don't really want to hear about it. You think bad. But today's time, you hear abandoned car, your eyes light up. Some people's eyes light up. I think about places like Dubai. An abandoned car over there is probably what, a Lamborghini? It's a Lambo, right? Something extravagant, something expensive, luxury. Like, I was just thinking about that when I was reading this title. But anyway, the next video we're getting into, man, is Boy Finds Old Abandoned Car in Forest and What He Finds Inside Makes Him Shock. Let's check it out. With how expensive they are, it's hard to believe that cars could just be abandoned, much less luxury and supercars. However, in some parts of the world, many of these vehicles that most of us could only dream of owning lay unused. From supercars in Dubai to abandoned warehouses, here are 20 most incredible abandoned cars that actually exist. Number 20. Abandoned Supercars in Dubai See? Imagine walking in an abandoned area only to discover a Lamborghini that's still in good condition, just collecting dust. That's not something- I when I first heard about that, Dubai having like abandoned cars like on the side of the road and they were actually Lambos. You're talking about my dream car, a car that I used to have on my wall, a, a poster on my wall as a kid. Unusual to see in Dubai. Those who like supercars probably know the actual value of these vehicles that are just sitting here, unused. This is one of the reasons why Dubai is a unique country. Every year, between 2,000 and 3,000 high-end vehicles are left deserted by their owners, from Ferraris to Bugattis to Lambos just covered in Guys. dirt. The reason? Well, some of them might just be playthings that are now too old to be used. However, most of them are abandoned because of their owners' bad financial decisions. The financial crises have left many struggling. It's easy to lose your money. One bad investment, one debt acquiring months of interest, and if your pockets aren't too deep, you'll suddenly find yourself with a negative net worth. Many, lured by high-flying careers in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, could not cope with the financial downturns. The situation is exacerbated by the UAE's strict Sharia law, under which failing to repay debt is not just a civil matter, but a criminal offense. Yes, in other countries, debt isn't something you should worry about going to jail for. However, in the UAE, it's a very serious matter. For this reason, many people abandon their luxury cars to escape jail time. The process for dealing with these vehicles is quite systematic. The Dubai municipality impounds any vehicle found abandoned. The owner is given a 15-day window to claim it back. If not, the vehicle is auctioned off. Bargain hunters and car enthusiasts might find this situation a golden opportunity to acquire a dream car at a fraction of the price. Albeit with a fair share of legal hoops and possible maintenance challenges due to the vehicle's neglected condition. And if you ever find yourself in UAE and want to steal a logo or other small parts of these abandoned cars, I'd advise you not to do it. As you can also get into some pretty serious legal matters if you do. Yeah, I hear Dubai's laws are very strict over there. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19. Hundreds of abandoned cars in Fukushima's exclusion zone. The Fukushima disaster, a nuclear fallout triggered by the devastating wrath of nature in March 2011, forced 160,000 people to flee and leave their homes. Well, not only their homes, but everything they ever owned as well, including their cars. It wasn't until recently that an urban explorer who traveled to Japan showed the world a chilling photo. Hundreds of vehicles abandoned in Fukushima's exclusion zone. A Porsche 911 Carrera, Mercedes S-Class, Nissan Skyline, Jaguar XJ, and a Chevrolet Impala SS are just several cars that lay abandoned in the area. Now these vehicles might be considered collectible, but they've lost their value since the nuclear fallout. While some of them are in mint- That Impala SS used to be my baby, bro. That, that used to be my baby. SS Impala or man. Condition and only need a paint job to be considered usable. The radiation they probably have makes them hazardous for the common folk. These cars already lost their chances of being collectibles. Some vehicles in the area have already been towed away, but many remain. You can even see some cars with personality, including a Japanese hearse modified to have a very fancy and intricate roof attachment. Now, I'm a big fan of Miatas, 
and I'm pretty sure that if I scoured hard enough, I'd find one abandoned in the exclusion zone. Even so, it'd be impossible for me to be able to use them. Radiation? No thanks. Again, thanks to their prolonged exposure to radiation, they're not just vintage, they're radioactive. That means no touching, no collecting, and no driving. The irony hasn't been lost on the car community. Comments online suggest ideas for a new Transformers movie where these cars become irradiated robots. Well, that's an idea. Number 18. Days of Thunder. If you're a big fan of cars and films about cars, then perhaps you've already heard of this movie, Days of Thunder. This NASCAR movie from the 1990s became iconic not just for its adrenaline-pumping race sequences, but also for its compelling off-track drama. Now, I'm not going to tell you its entire story, but the stars of the film, aside from the actors, are of course the cars. The movie features the number 46 City Chevrolet, the Superflow Chevrolet, and eventually the number 51 Mellow Yellow Chevrolet. It also features the number 51 Exxon Chevrolet and the number 18 Hardy Chevrolet. Recently, two cars believed to have been used in this iconic movie were discovered abandoned and rusting away in a wooded area. It's unclear where exactly in the United States two cars were found, but based on the photos of the two vehicles, it's very clear that the two cars won't be used again. A lot of cars from the 1990s still exist today, but these two have already reached the end of their lifespan. The explorers who saw them claimed they were too damaged to be restored. However, many suggested it might be a good idea to keep them solely for their role in the NASCAR movie. Unfortunately, these cars will never be used again. Number 17. Stolen Abandoned Cars from Doral Lake Now here's another unexpected discovery, an abandoned car. Recently, Miami-Dade and Miami police divers embarked on a unique underwater expedition in a lake in Doral, uncovering what's believed to be as many as 30 submerged vehicles. Yes, you heard that right. They've uncovered 30 submerged vehicles, or even more. The first vehicle they pulled out was a 2002 Nissan Altima. However, it's believed to have been stolen, and the same status was given to the other cars discovered underwater. Investigations yielded some pretty interesting information about the vehicles. From joyrides gone wrong, which ended up with the vehicles being submerged, to deliberate attempts to dispose of the vehicles. The police's investigation aims not only to recover these submerged secrets, but you see it all the time in movies. As soon as they get done pulling a heist or a robbery or something, they discard the car, whether they burn it or push it into a lake or something like that. So to potentially solve open cases. However, they don't anticipate any recoveries to escalate to more serious investigations. Now this just brings an entirely new meaning to the word carpool, don't you think? Number 16. An abandoned barn. Now who would have thought that an old barn is actually an old museum filled with the most interesting cars? In 2021, car enthusiasts were extremely envious of what several teenagers in the Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil stumbled upon. I feel like this is a scene out of like Fast and the Furious or something. The kids were exploring, or rather breaking into an old building in Rio Grande, and what they found was quite interesting. An old museum filled with nothing but cars. Well, not just cars, but machines, gas pumps, and an old coffee shop were also inside. It was a car enthusiast's paradise. Among the vehicles inside were a Ford Model T, Citroen DS, a Chevrolet Corvair, 1952 Chevrolet Styleline, Fiat 124 Sport Coupe, Simca 8, Renault Dauphine, Morris Oxford, and Hudson Hornet. But perhaps the most astounding is a three-wheeled Goliath pickup truck. Let's talk about that, shall we? This truck is a vehicle that blends the retro charm of classic cars with the innovative design of modern engineering. You see, this pickup truck adopted a three-wheel design for increased mobility and an easier way of navigating in tight spaces. This car was built around 1955, and its creation lasted until 1961. But what's so special about them? Well, aside from their design, less than 10,000 of these vehicles were made. Let's say around 9,900 units. That might sound like a lot, but for reference, units of cars being sold are usually in the hundreds of thousands if not millions. Number 15. An abandoned dealership. Let's talk about Ford. It's among the most renowned car manufacturers in the United States. Even in some other countries, it's a trusted manufacturer. It all began with Henry Ford, the visionary founder of the Ford Motor Company. 
In 1903, he aimed to build affordable cars for the average American, and so he set out on a mission that would forever change the world. Unlike other car manufacturers of his time who were focused on crafting luxury vehicles for the elite, Ford was determined to create a car that was simple, reliable, and most importantly, affordable. It's just something that could safely take you from point A to point B. In 1908, the Model T was introduced. It was a car that would later cement Ford's place in automotive history. It was sturdy, easy to drive, and versatile enough to navigate the rough American landscape. But what truly set it apart was its price. Thanks to Henry Ford's pioneering use of assembly line production, the Model T became increasingly affordable, making car ownership a reality for millions of Americans. But Ford's innovations didn't stop at the Model T. Henry Ford was a true pioneer, introducing the world to the concept of the assembly line. This groundbreaking production method didn't just make cars more affordable, it revolutionized manufacturing and set the stage for the mass production era. Workers on Ford's assembly lines could produce a Model T in just 93 minutes, a feat that was unheard of at the time. This efficiency not only slashed production costs, but also set a new standard in the manufacturing industry, making Ford a global leader in automotive production. As the decades rolled on, Ford continued to innovate, expanding its lineup to include trucks, luxury vehicles, and everything in between. The introduction of the Ford F-Series trucks in 1948 marked another milestone, creating a legacy of durability and performance that continues today. The F-Series would go on to become one of the best-selling trucks in America. Ford's impact, however, extends beyond just vehicles. The company played a crucial role during World War II, turning its production prowess to the war effort and manufacturing everything from bombers to tanks. But of course, throughout its history, Ford has also faced challenges, from economic downturns to shifting consumer preferences. Yet, it's consistently emerged stronger. The history of this manufacturer probably befits the owner of this abandoned dealership. An urban explorer discovered an abandoned but sealed dealership that was deliberately preserved. The structure was surprisingly filled with 80s Ford vehicles still wonderfully preserved. If someone could get their hands on these, they'd probably get a decent amount of money for them. But Facts. what's up with this abandoned dealership? The explorer discovered that it was once a massive and successful dealership until the death of its owner in 1986. Most units were sold off, but six cars remained. The late owner's wife deliberately left this behind to honor her beloved. These cars have single-digit numbers on their odometers, and some still have their covers. These were maintained by a wife who cared for her husband's passion. Isn't that sweet? Number 14 cars inside an abandoned church. Imagine exploring an abandoned church, but instead of holy relics, you found cars instead. That's what happened to a group of lucky firefighters in 2023. This astonishing discovery in the Netherlands revealed a hidden collection of 230 classic and rare automobiles. The collection was uncovered by firefighters responding to a call at the site last year. None of them expected that upon entering the establishment, they'd be welcomed by a breathtaking what? array of vintage vehicles. But how did these cars end up in the church? Right. The collection is the result of a reclusive enthusiast's 40-year passion project. Yep, someone who can afford to have expensive hobbies. Today, the vehicles stored in the abandoned area are now estimated to command a hefty sum in euros. Stored by Ad Palman, an 82-year-old businessman from Dordrecht, these vehicles have been silently guarded for decades. Unfortunately, with Mr. Palman now facing the challenges of dementia, he was forced to auction the magnificent- I don't know why, I just feel like it's more to this than meets the eye. It's probably like an underground casino up under there or something like that. Something, something seems off about this place. It's, it's, it's gotta be more to it or something illegal going on around there. It's in collection. Among the treasures are highly sought after models from Italian yeah. marquees like Alfa Romero's, Maserati's, and Ferrari's alongside quintessentially British luxury from Jaguar, Aston Martin, and Rolls-Royce, as CNN highlighted. The collection found a new owner in Gallery Aldering, acquired by motor vehicle enthusiasts Nico and Nick Aldering, though the purchase price remains confidential. Car enthusiasts? Any guesses? Ballpark estimates? Let me know in the comments down below. Number 13. Series 1 E-Type for car enthusiasts, this vehicle just might sound like a dream come true. In 2023, an explorer discovered a car in an abandoned barn. 
The car might surprise you, especially if you know a lot about vehicles. The Explorer found a Series 1 E-Type. First unveiled at the Geneva Motor Show in 1961, the E-Type debut was the automotive equivalent of a mic drop. Its sleek aerodynamic design, inspired by Jaguar's own D-Type racers that dominated Le Mans, looked like it was speeding even while standing still. The long flowing bonnet, the swooping lines, and that unmistakable rear end made it instantly iconic. Enzo Ferrari called it the most beautiful car in the world. Now when Enzo Ferrari gives you props, you know you've done something right. Unfortunately, this one needs a serious restoration to even be considered usable. Man, Number 12. Them restoration shows, like I like to see them take like a car like that and bring it to life. Oh, I used to spend my time watching those restoration shows at night. After a wind down of a long day, turn on one of those shows, man, I'd be glued to it for hours. Oh. Cars in a robot car park. The five million pound auto safe sky park once celebrated as the car park of the future for its use of robotic technology to stack cars, faced an untimely end when it went into receivership in 2003. The innovative facility, located on Morrison Street in Edinburgh, Scotland, stood deserted for over 10 years before demolition began to make way for a new office development. This demolition process unveiled a surprising discovery, eight cars that have been forgotten inside since the facility's closure. The sight of these abandoned vehicles ignited a flurry of speculation and theories online about their origin and why they were never claimed. A revelation from a former employee, however, suggested a mundane truth. These cars were likely acquired by the car park's operators as test subjects for the robotic equipment. When it first opened its electronic gates in 2001, the AutoSafe Sky Park was heralded as the UK's most advanced car park, boasting an innovative design that earned it award nominations. The facility operated on a futuristic premise where drivers would leave their cars in designated bays. Robotic mechanisms would then scan and transport the vehicles to available spaces using a complex system of turntables and lifts, echoing similar technologies found in China, Japan, and Australia. Designed to house 600 cars, the system promised efficiency and space optimization. Despite its advanced technology and initial acclaim, the car park struggled with the high costs and complexities of maintaining its robotic systems. This financial strain ultimately led to the company's downfall and receivership in 2003. Rumors spread that the facility was abruptly shuttered, imprisoning several cars within its walls. Number 11. Abandoned Cars of Hawaii Aside from China and Dubai, Hawaii also has its own problems dealing with abandoned cars. Hawaii, with its pristine beaches, lush landscapes, and vibrant culture, faces the problem of abandoned cars littering its streets and natural areas. This issue has grown increasingly prominent, affecting the beauty of the islands and posing environmental and logistical challenges. The roots of Hawaii's abandoned car problem have many reasons. High living costs, coupled with expensive auto repairs and towing fees, led some residents to leave their vehicles unattended when they break down or are no longer needed. The island's remote location also contributes to higher shipping costs for parts, making repairs prohibitively expensive for some car owners. The environmental and aesthetic impacts of this issue are significant. Abandoned cars become eyesores, detracting from Hawaii's natural beauty and potentially impacting tourism, a vital part of the island's economy. Moreover, these vehicles pose environmental hazards as they leak fluids that can contaminate the soil and waterways harming local ecosystems and wildlife. Local authorities have taken steps to address the problem, but solutions are complex and resource-intensive. Efforts include implementing stricter penalties for those who abandon their vehicles, enhancing vehicle registration tracking to hold owners accountable, and streamlining the process for reporting and removing abandoned cars. Some islands have initiated amnesty days, allowing residents to dispose of unwanted vehicles free of charge, aiming to reduce the financial burden of proper vehicle disposal. However, challenges persist. Removing and processing abandoned vehicles require significant resources, and the capacity to handle the volume of cars is often limited. Coordination between state and county agencies, law enforcement, and the community is crucial for effectively managing the issue. Number 10. Leesville Lake Yes, that's a car you're looking at in the middle of the lake. Virginia State Police first discovered this vehicle in February 2022. Naturally, upon seeing the car, 
Police officers immediately investigated the area. Luckily, it seemed like the car was deliberately driven into the lake, and there were no casualties. Why would you even try to drive a car into the water? Insurance fraud? Or something else? If you have any theories, let me know in the comments down below. Number 9. 1,000 Luxury Cars Did you know that there were once abandoned vehicles in the Atlantic? This happened in 2022. An abandoned cargo ship traversing the Atlantic with over 1,000 Porsches and other luxury vehicles suddenly caught fire. Now, what are the odds that a cargo ship carrying cargo worth millions of dollars would catch on fire? Luckily, not all the vehicles were damaged, and the majority of them were recovered. Number 8. $160 million Bugatti The Bugatti Atlantic is among the most legendary vehicles in the world. This vehicle was created in late 1936. Drawing inspiration from fighter planes, French car maker Bugatti developed this car dedicated to Europe's exclusive elites. Just four were built, and three are accounted for today. But the last one? Well, it disappeared at the time of the Second World War. Some claim that this elusive unit has been abandoned, but there are also reports of this unit being shipped to the United States to be restored. Unfortunately, none of these claims are verified, so for all we know, this legendary car could be collecting dust and dirt in the middle of nowhere. Number 7. Rusting Corvettes Ooh. Just recently this year, an automotive enthusiast discovered a property that had a plethora of classic cars, from Chevy Impalas to Corvettes released from the 1960s and 1970s. The catch? Well, they're rusted, and it's impossible to restore them. Still a pretty cool location to find, right? Number 6. A car That's park. the first time I've heard people say it's impossible. Why well, I feel like it's somebody out there that can restore it, man. There's somebody out there that'd be like, impossible, no. I can restore anything. For 47 years. Just imagine an ordinary parked car in Italy turning into a bona fide tourist attraction. Yes, you heard that right. This happened in the town of Conversano, located in Puglia, Italy. The car was parked by its owner, who then seemingly forgot where he had left it. As the days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months, the Lancia Fulvia remained unmoved. And so, this car has now been parked in front of this establishment since 1974, and it hasn't been moved wow. since. Number it's five. an official landmark now. <laughs> that thing is more well known than a lot of people there. Hi a car cemetery in Sweden. Deep in the heart of a Swedish forest lies a haunting yet captivating sight, a car cemetery filled with vintage American automobiles. This unusual graveyard, known as Bastnes Car Cemetery, is located near the small town of Tukfors, near the Swedish-Norwegian border. It's become a somewhat mystical destination for photographers, car enthusiasts, and explorers from all around the globe. The origins of this automotive necropolis date back to the 1950s, when two brothers, Ake and Christer Danielson, began importing used cars from the United States. The post-war era saw a booming demand for cars in Sweden, and American models were particularly coveted for their size, style, and performance. The Danielson brothers established a scrapyard in the forest, where they would break down these vehicles for parts or sell them as is to local customers. Over the decades, the collection grew to include hundreds of cars, ranging from bulky Cadillacs and sleek Chevrolets to rare models that now serve as a time capsule of the mid-20th century automotive industry. However, as the demand waned and the brothers' operation slowed, the forest encroached upon the vehicles. Trees and vegetation now weaved through empty chassis. Moss carpets, rusty exteriors, and wildlife have made a home in the hollow remnants of once proud machines. Each vehicle was part of someone's life, a participant in countless journeys before ending up in this remote forest. Why were they left here, so far from their origins? While some were simply too expensive to repair, others may have been part of failed restoration projects, and many were likely intended for parts that never found a buyer. Today, Bosnes Car Cemetery serves as an unofficial museum as the cars slowly succumb to the elements they're exposed to. Number 4. Lamborghini Countach An emblem of the supercar world, especially during the 1980s, the Lamborghini Countach not only defined an era of automotive design, but also became a symbol of luxury, performance, 
and the quintessential dream car for many enthusiasts around the globe. Introduced in the early 1970s and produced until the early 1990s, the Countach's most iconic versions and the peak of its fame indeed occurred throughout the 1980s. With its sharp, angular lines, scissor doors, and powerful stance, the Countach was nothing short of a revolution in automotive design. It was penned by the legendary Marcello Gandini of the Bertoni Design Studio, who managed to create a visual masterpiece that still turns heads to this day. Throughout its production, it saw several iterations, each more powerful and refined than the last. In the 1980s, models such as the LP500S, LP500QV, and the 25th Anniversary Edition were introduced. Chokers look like they strapped with rocket boosters on them. <laughs> Quattro Valvole, in particular, was significant for introducing a 5.2-liter V12 engine equipped with four valves per cylinder, pushing its power output to around 455 horsepower. This Man, back then, I know people just felt like those type of cars were just unattainable. These days, people feel like a, a Lamborghini. They feel like they can get, they can reach that. That's a goal that they can reach these days. Back then, not so much. Puntosh not only incredibly fast for its time, with a top speed approaching 180 miles per hour, had to be but also gave it exhilarating acceleration. One of the hallmarks of the Countach was its scissor doors, a feature that would become synonymous with Lamborghini's identity. These doors were visually striking and functional, considering the car's wide body and low stance. They In call them scissor doors back then. Nowadays, everybody refers to them as Lamborghini doors. I never heard them call scissor doors. Inside, the Countach was surprisingly spartan, given its exterior flamboyance, a reminder that it was a machine focused on performance. And so, imagine the people's surprise when they stumbled upon a Countach in Dubai. Oh Unfortunately, the Countach was caked with dust, and there'd be no way to obtain it for yourself or to even restore it. The reason why it was abandoned remains a mystery to this day. Number 3. Abandoned Honda NSX Officially launched in 1990, the conception and development of the Honda NSX is an astounding one. The story of the NSX, which stands for New Sports Experimental, began in the mid-1980s when Honda wanted to create a world-class sports car. It was a bold ambition, aiming to compete with the best from Europe, particularly with brands like Ferrari. Honda's goal was to produce a car that provided a superior driving experience, was reliable, and accessible compared to its European counterparts. The car was revolutionary in its use of materials and construction methods. It was the first production car to feature an all-aluminum monocoque body, significantly reducing weight to improve performance and fuel efficiency. This technological marvel was combined with a mid-engine layout, enhancing the vehicle's balance and handling. Under the hood, the NSX was powered by a 3.0-liter V6 engine equipped with Honda's VTEC system. This engine was capable of producing 270 horsepower, delivering a thrilling driving experience. The VTEC system, a hallmark of Honda engineering, allowed the NSX to offer an impressive blend of power and efficiency by adjusting the timing of the engine's valves. But perhaps, one of the most notable aspects of the NSX's development was the involvement of Formula One world champion Ayrton Senna. Honda, deeply involved in Formula One at the time, leveraged its racing connections, and Senna provided critical feedback during the car's testing phase. His input helped refine the NSX's handling and performance, ensuring it lived up to the expectations of driving enthusiasts. That's why many were perplexed upon the discovery of this NSX in the middle of the Russian forest. Was it abandoned or disposed of? Let me know about your theories in the comments down below. Number 2. Electric Vehicles Did you know that in China, you can easily find an entire fleet of electric vehicles in an open area? Yes, you heard that right. You can't really use them, no. But you can find them in abandoned areas just like this one. Driven by the desire to combat air pollution, reduce dependency on imported oil, and become a world leader in new automotive technologies, China has been aggressively promoting the adoption of EVs. This includes substantial government subsidies, investing in charging infrastructure, and policies favoring electric vehicles over traditional gasoline-powered cars. But there are some drawbacks. Well, actually, there are a lot of them. The technology of these EVs is fast-paced. In the race to lead the EV revolution, numerous startups and established manufacturers flooded the market with a wide range of electric vehicles. While this innovation spree has been largely positive, 
it's also led to some unintended consequences. The first issue is the rapid obsolescence of early models. As battery technology and EV design rapidly improve, older models become outdated much quicker than their gasoline counterparts. This, combined with a lack of spare parts and repair services for a wide range of brands and models, has rendered many of these vehicles impractical to maintain and repair. Then there's the matter of government subsidies. These incentives were a double-edged sword. On the one hand, they help make electric vehicles affordable to a broader audience. On the other hand, when these subsidies started to be phased out, the market saw a significant shift. Many consumers and businesses who initially purchased EVs to capitalize on these incentives found themselves with vehicles that were no longer economically viable. The reduction or removal of subsidies led to a decrease in new EV purchases and left existing owners feeling the pinch. And that's why if you travel to the right places in China, it's easy to spot hundreds of these vehicles parked under the sun. And now, it's time for today's topic. Boy finds old abandoned car in forest. What he finds inside it makes him shocked. It's not often that someone finds something out of place in the middle of the woods. But it seems like the child in this story stumbled upon a rare find. After discovering the box, he spotted the letter within it next. Luckily, his parents were camping nearby. He showed them the letter. It contained an address. This might not have been the smartest move, but the next day, they set off to the address. It led them to a house several miles away. They knocked, and an old woman answered them. Long story short, the letter found inside the car became the key to opening a safe left behind by the original car owner to his grandchildren. How the car ended up in the middle of the forest? Well, that's what? still a mystery. Number one, abandoned Mercedes-Benz. In 2023, an unnamed explorer discovered a warehouse teeming with vintage vehicles in the United Kingdom. Unfortunately, the warehouse looks like it wasn't in good shape. But let's talk about Mercedes here. In 1886, Carl Benz patented the Benz Patent Motor Wagon, widely regarded as the first true automobile. Meanwhile, Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach worked on their own automotive inventions. Emil Jelinek, an automotive entrepreneur among the first to see the potential in these newfangled machines, named the cars after his daughter, Mercedes. He worked closely with Daimler, and in 1901, the Mercedes 35 PS was launched, setting new standards for automotive performance and elegance. This vehicle was a game changer. Impressive. I wish the ones who created it could come, could like travel forward in time and see how far their idea has grown, because they'd be mind, their mind would be blown away. Seeing the wealthy and influential with its design and performance, effectively birthing the luxury car market. In 1926, the companies founded by Daimler and Benz merged to form Daimler Benz AG, and Mercedes Benz as we know it was born. The merger combined Daimler's passion for engineering excellence with Benz's innovative spirit, setting the stage for a century of luxury automotive leadership. Mercedes-Benz quickly established itself as a brand that didn't just follow the trends, it set them. From the introduction of the world's first supercharged car, the Mercedes-Benz SSK, to pioneering safety innovations like the crumple zone in the 1950s, Mercedes-Benz has always been at the forefront of automotive innovation. From the iconic 300 SL Gullwing of the 1950s, with its distinctive doors and racing pedigree, to the launch of the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, often referred to as the best car in the world, Mercedes-Benz has- they still are, like, out front. Maybe a few other brands, but they still rank up there. Mercedes is still who you look to for luxury, innovative, sleek design all of that type of stuff like that you still look to mercedes man established itself as one of the classics now i know that some of you guys might not be a fan of this car but you can't deny that it's among the pioneers oh absolutely. that's why despite the rundown state of the car discovered in the warehouse it was still considered valuable